We're going to talk about some special factors today. From earlier in this, we learned FOIL. We also did the box method. So you can use FOIL to multiply this out, or you can use the box method. I think I'll go ahead and use the box method over here to the side. So if I have A plus B, I'm going to put A plus B on the top and A plus B on the side and make my square. This is going to be A squared. This will be AB in here. This square is AB and this last square is B squared. And this is all plus in all my boxes. So this will be a squared plus when I add the a, b, and a, b together, I get two of those plus b squared. I could also make the box for the minus ones. So I'll have a minus b this time and a minus b. A squared in that first box. My next box is minus AB. The second row of this box is minus AB. And our last box is plus B squared. A negative times a negative is positive. So this is A squared minus 2AB plus B squared. So they're almost identical except for if I have a plus, this middle term was plus. If I have a minus, this middle term is minus. It follows a pattern square on the first, square on the last, and if you take the square root of each of those and multiply it by two, that gives you your middle term. And the sign here tells you if it's plus or minus. We're gonna write our polynomial in standard form highest exponent to lowest exponent. We're going to determine if it's a perfect square. So we want it a square, double square. <clears throat> and if it is a perfect square, we're going to use the pattern above to factor it. This can save you a lot of time just knowing this pattern and factoring. Our other methods for factoring will work. This is just kind of a shortcut and will save you lots of time. Okay, for the first one, I'm going to determine if it is in the pattern square, double square. Is this first one a square? And it is. So if I take the square root of it, A would be X. Is the last one a square? Yes. 3 squared is 9, so B is 3. And if I multiply A and B together and double it, so that's 3X times 2, I get 6X. Is that my middle term? Yes, it is. So this is in the form a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. And recall that factors into a plus b quantity squared. So this will factor into x plus 3 squared. Our old method would work. The leading coefficient was 1, so it would have to multiply to 9 and add to 6, so the numbers would have been 3 and 3. It is a little faster probably to go the old method if you have a leading coefficient of 1. <clears throat> but down here, when you have to split the middle on ones like number 3, that, those were long problems. This one will get you the answer very quickly. On the next one, number 2. Is the first one a square? Yeah, square to that is x. Is 25 a square? Yeah, 5 squared is 25, so b is 5. If I multiply those together, I get 5x, and if I double it, I get 10x. 5x times 2 is 10x. Is that my middle term? And it can be plus or minus on that. This is in the form a squared minus that 2ab plus b squared. <clears throat> and recall that factors into 
a minus b quantity squared. And so I'm going to go ahead and fill that in because it does fit the pattern. So this is x minus 5 squared. And you could use box or foil to check it if you're unsure if it worked. For number 3, is the first a square? It is. 2 squared is 4 and x squared is x squared. So a is 2x. 1 is also a square. 1 squared is 1, so b is 1. If you multiply those together, you'll get, and then double it, you'll get 4x. And my middle term is subtracting that 2ab. So that's in the form a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. And if you look up at the pattern, that's going to be a minus b quantity squared. For number four, that has a greatest common factor. So you should always check greatest common factor first. So I'm going to factor out that four. The other ones did not have a greatest common factor. Divide each of those by four. So that's going to be x squared plus 3x plus 9. We're just looking at what's inside now. We've already factored that 4, so let's look at that. Is that a perfect square? Okay, so a would be x. b squared is 9, so b would be 3. And if I multiply those together and double it, I get 6x. So this is not a perfect square trinomial. For number five, a <clears throat> would be 4x, this is a squared, this is b squared, so square root of that is 5, 5 squared is 25. If you multiply those together, that's 20x, and I double that, don't forget to double it, I would get 40x. That is not my middle term. <clears throat> so this is not a perfect square trinomial. For the next one, there's no greatest common factor. This is a square, so that's a squared. This is b squared, so a would be 7x, take the square root of it. Square root of 1 is 1, 1 squared is 1. If I multiply those together, that's 7x and double it, so you're multiplying it by 2, that's 14x. And that is my middle term. So this is in the form a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. And then that will factor into a minus b squared. And let's fill in what we found for a. a was 7x and b is minus 1. I would have had to complete the square if I had, or I'm sorry, not complete the square. I would have had to split the middle on that one if I didn't solve it with the perfect square trinomial pattern. The next pattern we're going to look at is difference of two squares. You can use FOIL or you can use the box method. I'm going to go ahead and use the box method on this. So I have a plus b for one of them and a minus b for the other. This box is a squared. The next box is plus ab. On the second row, this box is minus AB, and the last box is minus B squared.
And so <clears throat> that looks like a plus. On this then, I have a squared. Notice these two are going to cancel each other out, so you're going to end up with minus b squared. This is a difference of two squares. This pattern is different than our last pattern. Our last pattern, they were both the same sign. Notice this time I have them different signs. You should always start with greatest common factor. So if they have anything in common, you want to factor it out. And then you can look to see if it is a difference of two squares. And you'll just look to see, is the first term a square? Is the last term a square? And is there a minus between them? So if you have two values that you're, that you're factoring, and you have a minus between them, check and see if it is a difference of two squares. Okay, so on this first one, my first term is x squared. My last term is 9, and there's a minus between them. So I have two terms. Remember, terms are separated by plus or minus. I want to know if it's a difference of two squares. Is this first one a square? And it is. That's x. Is this last one a square? Square root of 9 is 3. And is there a minus between them? Yes. And so that factors into a plus b, a minus b. And it doesn't matter which one you put first. So this will be x plus 3 and x minus 3. If you want to put x minus 3 first and then x plus 3 second, you can. Okay, for number 2, this is a square and this is a square. So a would be x, b would be 5. However, I do not have a subtraction between them. So this is not a difference of two squares. On the next one, number three, this is a square. However, this is not a square. So this is not a difference of two squares. So difference, the first one's a square, but the second one is not. So not a difference of two squares. On the next one, number four, is this a square? It is. Is one a square? It is. Square root of one is one. Is it a difference between them? It is. So remember it's gonna be a plus b and a minus b. So x plus one, x minus one. On number five, is this a square? And it is, square root of 121 is 11. This is a square, that would be x. It is a minus between them. So this is gonna be a minus, or a plus b, a minus b. And so on this one I have x, I'm sorry, 11 plus x. and 11 minus x. Number six, you always should check greatest common factor, and this one does have a greatest common factor. I can pull out a 25 as well as an x. Divide this by 25x and you have x squared. Divide this by 25x and you have minus four. Now we're factoring what's inside here. And so, is this a square? Yes, that's x. Is this a square? Yes, square root of four is two. Is it a minus between them? It is. So this 25x stays on the outside, and the x squared minus four will factor into a plus b, so x plus two, and then a minus b, so x minus two. Go ahead and box this. 
For number seven, do they have a greatest common factor? No. Is this first one a square? It is, so it's 2x. Is the last one a square? Yes, squared 49 is 7, or 7 squared is 49. Is there a minus between them? There is. So this is in the pattern a squared minus b squared. And so I can factor that into a plus b and a minus b. Number eight, and our last one for the day, does have a greatest common factor, so let's factor it out. Those have a two and an x in common. So that leaves me with four x. So divide eight x cubed by two x, and I'm left with four x, and divide 50 x by two x, and that will give you 25. Now you're factoring what is in the parentheses. The 2x will just remain for the problem, and that was a squared. Is this first one a square? Yes. So a would be 2x. Is the last one a square? Yeah, 25 is 5 squared, so this is 5. Is it a minus between them? It is. So this is going to be, in the parentheses, 2x plus 5 and 2x minus 5, so ax plus, or a plus b, a minus b, and then that 2x stays on the outside. And so that's your final factorization for that one. And that completes the notes.